Awesome. They look, it looks good. All right. So next up we have uh, Dr. Sverstoff uh, from University of Mines, um, who will be giving an exciting talk on photochemically induced DMP of heteronuclear singlet order. Um, so if you're ready, take it away. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? And can yes. you see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this exciting opportunity to present our um, work here at PERM. Uh, this is a wonderful con conference so far. I really enjoyed it. And so um, uh, I would like to uh, start uh, to say uh, my uh, condolences to family and friends of Konstantin Leonj Ivanov, who unfortunately passed away recently. He really initiated the collaboration between a uh, group of mines and group of Novosibirsk. Here you can see uh, uh, we are playing some music uh, in mines uh, in 2019. And he really supported, uh, uh, he really provided a valuable uh, theoretical background to make this work uh, possible. So uh, as you know, um, the probably one of the oldest uh, hyperpolarization method which was observed uh, in NMR is DNP. It was observed in early 50s. And then uh, it actually was used to explain first observations of chemically induced uh, dynamic nuclear polarization, which in its turn was used to explain first observations of parahydrogen induced polarization, which we heard uh, from a, a very nice talk uh, by uh, Richard Eisenberg uh, on Monday. And so uh, from th this, you can uh, kind of uh, have uh, some understanding that all these techniques, techniques are somewhat related, uh, also somewhat different. And here I want to talk about kidney in zero field, which actually automatically means that uh, this is definitely uh, uh, not a DNP, which cannot happen in zero field. But also uh, the experiment I'm going to present you uh, will be really um, easy to understand if you know classical uh, parahydrogen experiments, namely Altadina and Pasadena. So um, let me introduce quickly the concept uh, beyond kidnip, uh, which is uh, very well known. Uh, so it relies on radical pair mechanism and it nicely uh, illustrated on this uh, cover image. So uh, there is a, some chemical reaction which is uh, initiated by light and then there are certain radicals produced and then these radicals interact at a certain moment there is a spin sorting stage. Uh, that, that means that in the beginning you can imagine that uh, there is some nuclear spin and uh, it, it more or less equally populated in alpha and beta state but then it appears that uh, the states uh, which uh, correspond to beta state end up in uh, certain uh, products, let's say in cage product, and the rest alpha states uh, have tendency uh, to be enriched in escape products. And this uh, uh, result in a, uh, a huge enhancement of NMR lines. So actually um, kidney uh, in zero field uh, was known from almost the very beginning of the kidney. And so uh, Robert Captain and Don, Dan uh, Hollander came up with a very uh, thoughtful uh, theoretical model explaining this uh, uh, field dependence of kidney uh, back in early 70s. Uh, and for us, the main uh, conclusion which we are interested in uh, is that population imbalance between states with different total nuclear spin can be created by kidney. And uh, our initial idea was to use this property to perform um, kidney hyperpolarization directly in zero field uh, to hyperpolarize some singlet states and to de de detect them optically uh, with zero field, which was nicely uh, uh, introduced uh, at this conference by John and Danila a couple of days ago. So at this stage, we are not there yet. Uh, we are doing these experiments right now uh, with a collaboration uh, with Michael Taylor in Barcelona. But I'm going to tell you something which, uh, which actually uh, um, helped a lot uh, uh, to do 
probably to, to, to achieve this uh, uh, goal. So uh, we uh, considered different kidney reactions and in the end we uh, uh, decided to um, stay with this um, really well-known uh, model reaction between porphyrin and benzokinone. So um, by exciting, uh, by uh, irradiating uh, with the green light, there is a certain cyclic um, chemical reaction, which results in a strong hypopolarization of benzokinone. And um, um, we were particularly interested in uh, uh, benzokinone, which contained carbon-13. Uh, so um, we studied uh, samples with natural abundance of, of these mo molecules. And uh, yeah, looked uh, what what uh, what happens if we go to really uh, uh, low magnetic fields with this reaction. And uh, to do this, we used uh, uh, quite classical um, experimental protocol, which is field cycling. So we irradiate the sample in some low magnetic field. Then we can uh, introduce this additional delay to study uh, kinetics of relax relaxation of the high polarized state. And then we bring the sample uh, to high field uh, to do high field detection. Okay, and uh, so actually um, it appears that irradiating a sample outside NMR magnet uh, makes a huge difference uh, because you can do it really efficiently if uh, compared uh, to the experiments where you do kidney directly in high field. And this is because you can really put a lot of uh, LEDs around your sample. You can increase concentrations. And here we designed some uh, holder which contains also a uh, Hemholtz coil. It is placed in the magnetic shield. And uh, yeah, the uh, high power LEDs, which are in fact very uh, cheap. And we have some, uh, some uh, uh, airflow uh, to control the temperature. And then we detect this uh, using uh, uh, bench top in a mass spectrometer. So we, this is actually quite similar uh, to many setups where you uh, study saber sheet experiments. So we have shield, you have bench top in MR. And then um, to be able uh, to perform really uh, reproducible and automated uh, transfer of the sample from the shield to the bench top. Uh, uh, we uh, purchased uh, a robotic arm, and it appears that uh, nowadays uh, there are many of uh, uh, reasonable, reasonably cheap uh, robotic arms. So you can uh, easily find robotic arms uh, which cost less than uh, 1,000 euros, and they are quite precise uh, in terms of position and in terms of timing. Uh, and they are really uh, easy to program. So uh, in a few days of uh, writing code, uh, we, uh, we uh, assembled the whole experiment. And so uh, here I have a short uh, demonstration uh, uh, how it actually happens. So the arm takes a sample out of magnet, brings it to the shield, LEDs are turned on, uh, the sample is irradiated, and the sample is put back. The trigger signal sends to uh, the spectrometer, and it acquires the spectrum. Uh, okay, so um, oops. Um, oops. So what do we expect um, for a simplified uh, carbon-13 proton spin pair? Uh, if we do irradiation in zero field where carbon-13 and proton um, eigenstates are uh, triplet and singlet states. As uh, uh, Captain predicted, we expect that uh, uh, singlet order can be uh, created. And upon uh, adiabatic transfer uh, of the sample to high field, we uh, should expect uh, distribution of populations uh, like this. And this is really uh, similar to Altadena experiment, as you can see here. On the other hand, if you perform the reaction at Earth's magnetic field, so for kidney, this is still um, considered as zero field because uh, hyperfine couplings in radicals are the dominant, dominant um, uh, interaction terms. Uh, 
but uh, so you produce something like singlet order, but then this singlet order is projected on the eigenstates of carbon 13 uh, proton in the diamagnetic uh, product. Uh, and so uh, it is projected into this alpha, beta, beta, alpha um, populations. And then uh, nothing really changes upon uh, a conversion to high field. And this is really similar to Pasadena case. Okay, so these are uh, uh, simplified, uh, somewhat simplified theoretical considerations and what we observe in uh, experiment. So here, uh, a thermal equilibrium spectrum of, uh, uh, of the sample uh, at uh, our benchtop in MR. So we see proton signals from porphy porphyrin, benzokinone, and chloroform. So we used deuterated uh, chloroform. We couldn't see any uh, signals in carbon-13 channel uh, because of the concentration, low concentrations. But then when we perform irradiation at Earth's magnetic field, we suddenly see a huge signals appearing here, and they actually correspond to carbon-13 um, uh, uh, signals of the benzokinone, where carbon-13 sits at, at the second position. And indeed, the pattern is somewhat uh, similar to what you would expect uh, from Pasadena uh, type of uh, polarization. We still cannot see anything in carbon-13 uh, channel. Uh, and I also want to mention that this central line is uh, actually comes from hyperpolarized signal because we waited, we placed our uh, sample for more than 5T1 in, in Earth's field. And also we couldn't see any signal in case we do not irradiate the sample. So this is a uh, hyperpolarized signal and uh, it's uh, hard to say what exactly is happening here. But when you perform the same irradiation in zero field, first of all, we could see that uh, proton spectrum changes. And uh, this, this is uh, a spectrum you would expect from this altadena uh, type. And so uh, in this case, we were able to um, detect carbon-13 uh, uh, signals nicely because we were able to apply a homo uh, proton decoupling. And also we uh, uh, saw that there is a polarization coming from the benzokinone uh, at ipso position, it is the first position. Okay, having this, we wanted to explore how these uh, states will relax um, uh, and uh, for that, we performed uh, 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 hyperpolarization and we stored these states uh, and we uh, probed these uh, dynamics, kinetics of the re relaxation. And so here you can see that actually in zero field, the hyperpolarized state uh, uh, relaxes uh, almost two times, uh, more than two times longer which in fact uh, signifies that this is a long lived state, single state um, uh, created in zero field. With that, I want to proceed with conclusions. So photokidnip is demonstrated for a model system at low magnetic fields. NMR signals are enhanced by factor of 200 and long lived heteronuclear single order is formed at Zulf. Also, I, uh, it is possible to perform very efficient irradiation of samples outside NMR spectrometer. With that, I would like to acknowledge uh, a perfect, wonderful team in Mainz and a brilliant uh, team in Novosibirsk. And thank you for your attention. And I would be happy to answer your, question, your questions if you have any. Thank you. Great talk. Thanks so much um, for speaking here today. Your uh, experimental setup incorporating the robotic arm is so cool. Um, Thank you. During my employment as a grad student at the moment, <laughs> um, how fast can you get the uh, robotic arm to swing over? So you mean the transfer time? Uh, yeah. We have, yeah, so it's a couple of seconds for, for, for the presented uh, experiment. Two or three seconds, I don't remember exactly. Okay, is that easily uh, changeable or is, it, is that as fast as you want to go with that? Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, um, this, I would say, uh, the fastest we achieved. So these robotic arms, they um, are designed to do 3D printing. 
So they are quite precise, but not very fast. But in case uh, if your sample allows, uh, if, if nuclear spins have uh, long enough T1, in our case, we had something like seven seconds. So it was uh, fast enough. Awesome. All right, we got a question here. Um, did the central proton antiphase signal arise from uh, 3JCH coupling in the uh, benzo genome? Yes, exactly. So uh, I think uh, uh, the question about this. So uh, there are two, two things happening simul simultaneously. So first of all, indeed, antiphase a carbon proton. And then at Earth field, additionally, there is already um, um, integral uh, kidney happening with a, uh, with a just uh, purely carbon-12 benzokinone. Uh, so they overlap. At zero field, uh, this is not happening. So uh, only carbon-13 uh, containing uh, molecules are polarized. 